Hello everyone, this is Olga Show. We are in San Jose, Silicon Valley. We are in ice skating arena here in capital of uh, our Silicon Valley technology kind of stuff. And we are with David Drake, who came all the way from New York, talk about crowdfunding and his experience with that new wave we have right now in America and actually other countries as well. So, hi David, how are you? Oh, hi, thank you for having me, Olga. I'm very excited being able to talk about what's happening while I'm traveling between continents. I just also came in from New Zealand on my way to New York. And then I'm going off to Moscow, actually, in, in Milano. Wow, so you're traveling and so happened to be, I, went, uh, I was a student in Moscow State University and I just heard that you actually uh, spent time in September of last year in Moscow talking yeah. about crowdfunding. Yes, I was talking when at, at, at a weekend for the State University's uh, Technology Weekend. So 110 universities nationwide were launching the Technology uh, Weekend and at Moscow State University. It was really interesting. I've never been there before, so it was fantastic to be there. And how did they accept theory of crowdfunding? They liked the idea. They don't have much of it there. Most of the speakers that were there were mainly in academia. So we were talking about what's happening in academia. Crowdfunding, according to some research in 2011, was 1.5 billion. And this last year was 2.7. It's going to be around 6 billion this year. And you, I need to break it down a little bit. Crowdfunding is really when you use a credit card, more than two people online use a credit card to pay for something, a project, an event. Mm -hmm. That's considered crowdfunding. So half of the money of the six billion estimated this year and last year were donations, like charities, Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So they count that in. And it's been around for the longest time. Another part is microfinancing, peer-to-peer -peer lending. You give $100 and you get it paid back with 8%. Kiva is an international organization, and that's also crowdfunding. So it's not necessarily new things per se, but the concept is that you're doing it online, you're reducing the cost, and you're automating the services. Right, so could it be other people from other countries participating in that? Yes, for instance, rewards. When you give money, you get something, like music, entertainment, we started. Kickstarter here in California is the biggest one in the world. They did $274 million last year in 2012. And 100 people from 177 countries, that's 90% of every country in the world, gave money for a reward. That means they didn't get stock, they got the gadget, they got a ticket, they got an experience, and that is really exploding in the US. So this year, as opposed to last year, US will probably stand for 72% of all growth in crowdfunding and over half of the money will be coming from the U.S. across the board globally. All right, so what moved you to crowdfunding uh, uh, movement? It was actually an accident. We actually invested two years ago in doing conferences on finance, institutional investors and family offices, angel investors, and at the same time it was election year, six of our speakers were down in D.C. every other week as subcongressional witnesses. So when they came in to speak every other week, we had fresh content and information on what's happening. At that time, because it's election year, those six underlying bill bills of the Jobs Act, Jumpstart Our Business Startup Act, those were the speakers that came in who were witnesses before they were put together under the Jobs Act. They were se separate bills, really didn't have much to do with each other at all before Congress voted in into one act. So it became an accident. I got to meet several hundred of the leaders, the thought leaders in North America and in Europe. And I just made it a passion project of mine to know as much as possible about it. And since, I started writing for maybe 25 different magazines, as well as you know, helping organizations get speakers on that topic, and also other topics, you know, SME policy, angel networks, VC funds, private equity funds. So it's been a pleasure being involved in a movement that's grown so quickly. So David Drake, do you have a website where people can find you with your new movements idea and all of the information you may be posted and besides that you're writing for magazines? Yes, so we don't have our own magazine, we do not have our own platform in crowdfunding. And we're not, we have not invested in that industry per se because we want to be on the 
broker-dealer side, private equity side, venture capital side, structuring things in the spirit of crowdfunding. And the information, as you were asking me, can be found on a website called The Soho Loft. That's T-H-E SohoLoft.com. So the new articles we come out there come out there on a regular basis. And that firm uh, will be acquired next year by some funds to give them distribution and access of knowledge and information. So a lot of the writing we do is really to educate people what's happening and give them the power of knowing what they can do to raise money. I went with the US Commerce Department to Rome and Brussels last year as a delegate and they was talking about small, medium-sized enterprises in the US and Europe. Even though crowdfunding was not a hot topic then, we talked about it, but there's many policies in place, both sides of the ocean, and now in, in Australia, when I went to visit, talking about how do we get capital to small businesses, because they stand for 60 to 80 percent of all the jobs, and we need to get them to cash so they can grow faster. So, what's your education to help you to l talk about finance and looking for different um, law and um, some obstacles you meet yeah. on the way. I, I went to grad school in DC 20 years ago, but uh, this knowledge that I'm learning now is because I'm curious. And the reason I write is because I want to know. So if I don't know something, I'm like, well, I'm going to write an article to find out, let other people know. So you kind of do your own research and then write about it and let other people know? I do it four or five times a week sometimes. Okay, and then you travel also. Do you learn about each and every country before you go there or uh, while you're there or probably all of the above? All of the above, you're right. I went to New Zealand because they asked me to speak at a conference and then I spoke at five conferences in uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet university professors, uh, funds that had six billion dollars, private equity funds, VC funds, angel networks, technology transfer offices, crowdfunders, uh, private equity marketplaces. I get to meet all of the players in the ecosystem and I really enjoy understanding what kind of means they have in each country helping small businesses grow. So from all of the countries you visited, by your opinion, which one is more prepared to use crowdfunding sources? I must say right now when it comes to equity, which is minuscule, equity last year according to some reports was less than 5% of all the money in the world which means you, get, you give cash, you get security. On that side of things, Italy and the UK are the top of my list. Italy because they're actually creating the first law in the world, allowing crowdfunding where you can get stocks. And the UK because they're already operating and in business, because it's not legal here. On donation reward, which is 95% you know, of the money, of the estimated five, six billion this year, the US is the lead. By far, there's one company called Lending Club. I work very closely with them, and they're going to hit over two billion dollars this year here in San Francisco. And they actually took the former president of Morgan Stanley, John Mack, and put him on their board. Hmm. And it's not really out yet that they're going to hit two billion, but that puts them, one company, doing over 30 percent of all the crowdfunding revenue in the world. So there are some explosive superheroes in the industry that really scaled because the scalability has been the issue for other segments of crowdfunding. And your last name, I was kind of interested, uh, your nationality would be from far which country? Just was wondering. Yeah, I was born in Stock outside Stockholm, Sweden and I okay. grew up in Sweden for the first 20 years of my life. So okay. I still have family in Stockholm. But you don't have any accent. I guess you learn English at Washington, D.C. very well. I've been fortunate. There's still a little accent, but I've been fortunate. I, I think Swedes pick up English pretty well. You know, we dub our movies. We get to listen to English-sounding movies as we watch them growing up. All right. So in terms of obstacles we have to see or maybe something to avoid in crowdfunding, what can you teach us as regular Fox to invest, not invest in the companies or look into your movements? To avoid, you know, you can you can donate money for rewards and experiences online for a dollar or five dollars. Instead of saying what to avoid, I think the first thing is get accustomed to understand who's out there and what they do. 
So just go online and look at a couple of sites, do some quick search and say crowdfunding and read what people do, look at what people look money for and look at the rewards they offer and just play around. Make it fun and just play around. I don't want you to put money in, I don't want you to invest yet. I want you to have the comfort of being able to say, you know, uh, why not? I'm curious. Let me go on my computer tonight and just find out what this is about. Can I see what people are doing? And you might find some really fun things. You know, I was at Cornell University lecturing and one of the graduate students from Shanghai came up to me afterward and said, I'm a, shop, a shopaholic for Kickstarter, the leading crowdfunding site. I buy everything that I think is cool and I can't help myself. <laughs> and I was shocked. This is, a, you know, somebody who worked for 10 years, now in graduate school, telling me this and you know she loves it so you're gonna find the same aspect there as any other e-commerce or stores out there people are very very passionate and this is a very passionate business it does not work for certain industries if you have trade secrets or design secrets this is just madness you can't do this at all you know you know it not it's not a solution for everybody and that goes for finance different solutions for different players at a different time of their growth of the company. And that's really what I want to hone down in my writing and help people understand where they can go to find money. Now, why did you move uh, to become a speaker, like express the ideas to others? I know it's not easy kind of position. It's kind of fun, but at the same time you travel a lot and then you meet a lot of people. But then if you're so passionate, I guess that's uh, what's your answer to that. The speaking is because I need to see people face to face. And combining the speaking and the engagement of going to different countries, I get to sit down and meet maybe 20, 30 people. It's intense, it's exhausting, but I really dig into how the regulatory structure and the country is set up politically and systematically to help companies and what the challenges are for the different entities in the ecosystem. And that's why I travel. I also read about you that you work with um, legislature <laughs> part here in America, right? All of this legislation, is that correct that you're trying to be sure that actually people would feel more comfortable with crowdfunding and also government? Yes, I'm part of the organizations who have been talking to the SEC every single week since uh, the organizations for crowdfunding was created. One is called CIFRA and one is called CIPA. One is for the association and one is for the regulatory advocates who talk in the SEC. The SEC has to implement crowdfunding for equity law that has not been implemented yet. Okay. And we have been working with them and they've been very helpful coming up with the rules, what they should be. It's been delayed, it's going to continue being delayed, but they had a lot of questions, we have a lot of questions, and I think they're getting close to answering those. And remember, this is for crowdfunding for equity. When you give cash, you get stock. That's not legal here in the U.S. And we're working with SEC to make that legal. But, you know, it's been fascinating to see how that works. I wrote a couple articles on Forbes and Thomson Reuters. How does the, does the SEC work and how's the process? And it takes a lot of time, a long time. You know, we thought it would be finished last January. Now it's probably not going to be finished till early 2015. Wow, it's many years. So, how many years uh, since it started? Uh, since it started, it's going to be easily a thousand days. I think I wrote an article about that too. A thousand days of crowdfunding. Uh, we have a, um, a fairy tale story, so one thousand and one night, where the girl was reading the stories for a prince, and eventually they got married. That's all she was needed to do: read the uh, stories for him, so he will go to sleep and because they got married. That's a short story of that, but you know, uh, you're over 1,000 night already. And 2015, it's two more years almost. Yeah, so I that's... think it'll be, if we're lucky, it'll be last two months of 2014. Otherwise, it's going to push into 2015. All right, and you also work with some startups, is that correct? Or you yes. invest in these startups? Uh, we actually, I take board advisor positions with companies that I think can grow really fast. And it doesn't matter if it's crowdfunding or patents or technology or early stage or late stage. But I advise them on structures and capital uh, formation challenges globally and strategies as well as distribution, whether it is communication or products. So yes, we do. 
And now being Russian myself, uh, was born in Russia, you're going back to Russia again? What was the reason to go back to Russia? I'm going through Russia for one day because I'm on my way to Milan. I'm going to have a meeting there and then go to Milan because I'm going to be speaking there for the, actually the Social Media Association of Italy. And okay. those are the managers. So if they decide to do something, all consumers of Italy will know about it because they're the social media managers of all the Italian companies. So they wanted me to speak, so I'll speak there in the week. Right. And I like Milana. I'm actually going to have my mom fly in afterwards and spend some time with her. That's a wonderful place, place of Leonardo da Vinci, yeah. Michelangelo, uh -huh. and all yes. of those uh, place for shopping. <laughs> good dress, uh, good yeah. shoes. You yes. think shopping, I think old architecture and statues. I did see that too because I went to all of their castles and I'm thinking, wow, my God, they're well short, but all of those high ceilings and all of those bricks, I saw all of it. I haven't gone to any castles. No, I went to all of the castles. You have to recommend me some. Yeah, they are like pretty much just take a walk in Milan and you will just see a castle, go inside and it's museum and I don't think they even charge for it. I don't remember paying for it. I would just go walk through entire uh, uh, Milan and all of the streets. And you go in in the summertime, so it would be good. Yeah, it will be warm. It'll no be warm. snow, no nothing, so you will be having a good time there, definitely. Well, I wish you a good luck with your trips and um, letting us know, keep us posted about crowdfunding solutions and all the new law which will help us to invest in the companies and um, receive rewards and let other companies give rewards to others. And uh, hopefully we will see you speaking here soon in California. Because yeah. I usually cover a lot of high-tech conferences here. Well, I hope to be back. And Olga, this is the center of technology. Right. So what's happening here and what you're doing right now is the most important area. And I try to come back here as often as I can because I feel this is the center of innovation. Yes, please welcome and stay here. And uh, we have a lot of movements about crowdfunding, and including venture capital is already supporting that. And we will be talking more and more about that, definitely. And I already got um, Sydney Armani who spoke about crowdfunding in our show. So that's posted on my website. So we'd be interested to see what will be going on. So I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and good luck with your trips and new legislation. <laughs> okay? Thank, Thank you. you.